welcome back! My name is Wen and I am the founder and CEO of SushiVid. Today I'm going to tell you guys something very personal. Uh, it's about my four most painful experiences that I've learned. Uh, some of these topics may offend people just because you were part of the experience. I apologize in advance but I think this is my experience and I have the right to share how I feel as well. Uh, the least painful of all but the fourth one stands for the influencer managers that are unethical. In the first two years of SushiVid's life, we were our tech wasn't that sophisticated so we had to rely a lot on ourselves being the agency and on hindsight it's a good thing that we behave as an agency for a while because we were able to understand how the flow is as an agency first then only we build our tech accordingly so when we were working as an agency some influencer managers uh, favor some certain agencies and as a result they were giving us unfavorable rates so we were not I thought we got the rates but we were not playing on level playing field with the rest of the agency so we lost a lot of campaigns because we lack that relationship with that influencer manager actually our cost is pretty pretty reasonable like you know usually we charge anywhere from 25 to 40 percent depending on how much we need to work um, and I know of a lot of other agencies that charge 100 percent or 50 percent and above and we are definitely not one of those kind of agencies and yet we can lose a campaign uh, I guess because one I tell everybody our rates and two the influencer agency on uh, the influencer manager on top of that told the other agency how much they quote us and uh, the other agency is informed of our price right so therefore they were able to quote even lower than us just to get the deal and I thought that was really um, unethical and I didn't like that um, but the second thing that uh, really hurts me is agencies I think in the second year of running SushiVid right, we thought like oh let's target the agencies because when you target one agency they have 10 brands we work with 10 brands right that's great uh, so in the second year of SushiVid's life we actually went and pitched hundreds of campaigns right so we built our decks we pitch we built our decks we pitch and like out of a hundred that we did we only closed like four deals and I don't think it's ever because we are not good enough but because I think none of us came from the agency background so we didn't know the flow of how it works it turns out that Usually when a client asks for a pitch, uh, they will ask for three pitches so the agency that I pitch to is only one out of the three and for them, they, when they close the deal, they will likely get another three uh, agencies to uh, to pitch to them a better rate, right? So my chance of getting the job is one out of three times one out of three, which is one out of nine, which is ridiculous. Another thing is that they will, they will give us very little information and they'll just say like, uh, you send me a proposal, uh, you propose. And then we end up giving them a 20 slide only to know that they only use two slides. And this happened for a whole year without any of them telling us and until one day I actually sat down, I took my proposal, I went to an agency, I sat down with the guy and said, dude, I have done this 50 times, tell me what is wrong with my proposal, please tell me what is wrong with my proposal, why am I not getting the jobs, right? But so after that we made a commitment, I told, I wrote an email to all the agencies, all the leads and said, unfortunately SushiVid will no longer be pitching with you anymore. So nowadays, agencies that we're close to, if they come and ask us for like, you know, hi one, can you just give me a ballpark number? Can you just give me a one pager? Fine, I'll still do it for you if it's a one slide, two slide. Tell me exactly what you want, but don't give me an executive and the executive just say you propose lah. Okay, and there's a high chance they will ask me for PowerPoint slides. They have the cheek to ask me for PowerPoint slides because why? They love our design so much, they took our slides and made it their own and gave it to the client. So we did their work for them essentially. So guys, if you guys are working with marketing agencies, don't be noobs. Okay, don't send them full decks, send them in PDF. If they ever ask you for working decks, say no. Okay, I tell it's just not worth it because at the end of the day, it's under you are underappreciated. So by the way, sorry, yeah, those agencies who are hearing this, if you just say you're unhappy about this, you know, I, I didn't mention you lah, so you know, don't be angry, please. Okay, so the third thing I guess is going more painful now. <laughs> it's getting a bit more painful. I think the one of the most painful thing is uh, the betrayal from my team. So I've had ex instances, I guess. You know, I kind of treat my team as family, I treat them as friends. I realize that they don't treat me as a friend, they only treat me as a boss. Uh, and they will leave me when they get a better option or they get a better offer somewhere else or when they feel bored. You know, so I've always been somebody who explained a lot to my team. I explain every decision that I make. I tell them why I do stuff because I want them to understand. I hope that, you know, they can understand with me. So, but I realize that I can't compete with money. So especially a small startup like us, when another company come and give them a 70% increment, what can I do? So I've lost some team that way and that is fine. I mean, some of them, they live on a good note, some of them, they live on a bad note. But what is painful is when 
you know, I throw a party for them and I say farewell, I wish them all the best and then after that, they secretly from behind, you know, invited my entire team, excluding me, to go out for drinks. Not just me, like, a group, uh, like the seniors in the team wasn't invited out to go for drinks. And what transpired in that meeting was a lot of gossiping, uh, which is what I don't like, you see. I don't mind if they go out, I mean, but what, what really hurt was when they started talking about like, oh, if you work with one, be careful of this, that, this, that. Oh, if you work with so-and-so, you know, he likes it this way, this way. I mean, you shouldn't be telling, because we grow as well as leaders, I change as well over time. And just because you knew the person that I was two years ago, doesn't mean that that's going to be the same person two years later. And when you ill-prepare or when you, you know, forewarn my newer employees uh, before you leave about your experience, in a way, you are giving them your point of view without letting me give them my point of view. And that's really unfair, right? And actually, one of them actually was felt so bad about that whole thing that they actually decided to tell me. So obviously, amongst them, those who got dragged along, because not everybody wanted to go, but people felt like, oh, you know, uh, if I don't go, then it's like I might be fear of missing out. I might lose some colleagues who don't want to hang out with me, right? So some of them who went actually came back and feedback to me about it. So people told me like, oh, you know, when this was what happened, and I was so sad, like... At the end of the day, we are all running a company because we want to have fun, we want to find it. I mean, I don't know about you, like when I started the company, all I wanted was an environment where people feel safe to work, people feel like they can be themselves, right? That's why I'm always myself, right? I don't want people to, I don't want any toxic, I don't want an environment where the bosses are not talking to you and then they silent you out or you know, that politicking, like you know, I might be hiring, I might be like upgrading this person and then silently upgrading this person and then I'm playing some games. I'm not playing no games, right? So I, I expect that same kind of uh, respect from my team which at that point in time a certain few people didn't uh, understand that or maybe at that point two years ago I wasn't you know as transparent as I am today so I don't know it could happen both ways but that was certainly something that really hurt and now I'll come to the last but not least the most painful experience that I've had running my startup is to let go of my best friend so um, I hired a guy and he has been with the company from, I think he's probably the third hire in the company and he lasted the longest of all. Um, he was really, really good. He was aws awesome as a team player. But at the same time, I think that was just, we were together for a little bit too long that, you know, I feel like a lot of times when I talk to him, I often have to argue with him. I often have to time spent justifying my decisions when I already justify, I already play my pros and con list and then I already play my scenario two, three, plan B, C, D already many times so when I have to explain this to him and you know because he was sort of like a leader in the company it was I mean I love him to bits right and I'm sure he to a large extent loves me as well as, as, a, as a team member but there was just a lot of uh, things I guess he he also grew to love the startup and grew to love Sushi the way I do he's still a very very good friend a very dear friend to me and always going to be my family it's just that you know that period of time that you know that was so excruciatingly painful uh, guys this wraps up my video and i hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments about your painful experience share it with me i'm happy to hear them if you have any feedback about my video let me know as well uh, thank you so much and have a good week ahead bye